Last night, I booked Frosthead Paris. Let's go. Good morning, guys, and what a morning it is. It is currently 6.45 a.m. And yesterday, Charlie surprised me by booking us a trip to Paris for today. And we went to the theatre last night, so we've not had a lot of sleep. Um, but we are packed, we've arrived at the airport, and we are currently in Wagamama's about to get some breakfast. And I didn't know what to order, because I was like, mm, I don't really know if I fancy, like they've got a lot of eggs and stuff but like, sometimes eggs are a bit weird for me so I was like no and then I realised I've had a nail fatality already this morning there is a katsu curry on the menu and I, is 6.45am too early for a katsu curry? I mean some would say yes but actually I could actually smash a katsu curry right now I could as well, I think I'm going to god when in an airport you know oh yeah a breakfast katsu curry We've made it to Paris. We've got our bags, and Charlie's just sitting on the floor trying to work out the tickets for the trains and stuff. We've realised that we have absolutely no idea how any of that works, but because it's the Olympics this year, they've got like a new app and stuff, I think. So hopefully, it will be fairly straightforward, and we're going to get the metro. The plan is to go straight to our hotel. I think we're going to be there a couple of hours before check-in but either we're kind of hoping the room might be ready a little bit early or we can ditch our bags there and go for a nice walk or something we have made it onto the metro i don't know if it is the right metro we're hoping it is yeah. <laughs> everyone seems quite confused but um Fingers crossed it'll take us the right way. Okay, we have dropped the bags off, we have showered, we have changed. I was actually supposed to be wearing a really cute little cherry jumper this evening, but um, it's really hot actually. So I've just gone with a t-shirt and we're off to find some food. First order of business when in Paris. I am desperate for pastry. We want to try fondue. I've never had cheese fondue. What else do we want to try? I'm definitely in the market for um, some profiteroles because I used to love profiteroles when I was a teenager and I haven't had them in ages and so it just feels right. Does it? What do you want? Mm. What are you after? I don't know really. I'm just... My feet... Like, I'm, I know this sounds really weird. <laughs> I'm so glad that I've showered because I feel yeah. like everything was so sweaty. Yeah, it was. This morning was like really sweaty, um, but I think we're both like l lacking energy a little bit. So, a li yourself. are you not? Yeah, no, I am. Yeah, he is. So a little bit of food should set us right. We found a French supermarket and obviously when you see a foreign supermarket, you have to go in. So, Charlie spent quite a lot of time in France when he was growing up, but I have not really spent any time here, so I'm going to need you to show me what's good. Yeah, these these sandwiches, there's not... I mean, they're just supermarket sandwiches, surely. Yeah, they're not very good. We're in the crisp aisle. Look at these. They're called Monster Munch, but they're little ghosts. It's and then not, there's ketchup flavour ones. It's not exactly the nice gout. Goot. Um, my haul so far is a bottle of Orangina because I've never tried it and Charlie says it's a necessity. I don't think you're grasping the size of this baby bell that's in my hand right now. Look at that. And I'm going to eat it on the metro on the way to dinner. And I'm so thrilled with my choices. What's your French supermarket haul then? Whatever it is, it's not going to be as good as my giant baby bell. Are you doing the right way? I've got no idea. I thought you were navigating. I don't know, but some guy just tried to speak to me in French and I got... I wonder why he did that. It's almost like we're, we're in Paris. It is a bit like that. Um, what have you got? A meat snack. Yeah, a meat snack. And he, he, so he bought an entire packet of meat and said I was weird for buying okay, a baby bell as big as my hand. Can you carry your drink? Because I want to open my meat snack. Yeah, okay, okay. We found this really cute little arcade and it's got like ateliers in it and like just it looks like a load of small businesses it's so lovely oh my god an estate agent i love to be nosy about houses my camera's really zoomed in there we go would you live in these no not for that one quite like that one yeah 1.1 million 1.1 million yeah basically we're looking for somewhere to eat and we want something like that's you know giving french but uh, basically something that I didn't realise is that loads of the restaurants close in between lunch and dinner so we've chosen like a bit of an awkward time for it. Oh, there's a cafe up there. Oh yeah, cute. 
Let's have a little look at the cafe. The fact that all the roads just look like this, like, it's all so like picturesque, it's silly. We have found somewhere that was open, it is called, it's up there, La Grille Montorgueil. And I definitely just butchered that. But we sort of stumbled across it, obviously because we were looking for somewhere that, where that was open. But it turns out this has been here since like 1904 and the, the guy that runs it has like a hundred and something thousand Instagram followers and one of them is Gordon Ramsay, is that right? Charlie was just looking at it. Well, I don't know whether he's associated, but he definitely came back, came round, and I don't know, some guy and his friends with sure. Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, so it must and it's been here a really long time, so I'm going to give this a little go. Although the first thing we've got is some um, Coke Zeros, and they've come with spoons in, which I think is a bit strange. I think it's something to do with the ice. Yeah, I think it probably is. Food acquired, we've got some steak frites. They also brought over this uh, basket of bread. I am very pleased with my decisions right now. This is Bernays sauce. We've got some salad. Good. <laughs> we are on the move again, and we're no, much happier we now. We are going to Disneyland Paris tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, while we were booking, while we were eating dinner, we booked tickets to Disneyland Paris tomorrow, which wasn't the plan. But the thing is, we love a bit of Disneyland. And also, we bought our Disney uh, jumpers just in case. Yeah, we did. So, I guess we're going to Disneyland tomorrow, which is going to be quite a fun day. But so that means we've got lots of Paris to pack in this evening and Sunday. So, I think this vlog will be that, and then the Disneyland vlog will probably be a separate video. But um, we are now on our way to the Louvre. We're going to have a look at that. We're off to the Louvre. We are. That um, restaurant was all right. Like, the, the chips were good, but the steak was not fantastic, by the way. So, wouldn't necessarily recommend. Yeah. The mayo was nice. Nice. Yeah, we're gonna get a little sweet treat later. We've got a boat ride booked as well that I booked on Get Your Guide yesterday. Um, but that's at night time because I wanted to do it with like all the lights. It says they play like classical music or something. I just thought it'd be nice. So yeah, we're gonna fill the time between now and then by trying to run around as many of the tourist spots as we can basically. We found this lovely little spot to sit with an Aperol spread and just sort of people watch and chat. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Look how stunning it is. It's all got like red. Really oh, August. A U G U S T E. And yeah, it was just a lovely little place to sit. They had quite an extensive cocktail menu as well, so if that's your bag, just a little recommendation for you. Whoa, look how tall this building is. Oh my god, look at the loo. The loo. Where is the loo? Oh, well, that sign says the loo. The loo is that way. And they've got um, they've got a big loo that way. God, this bit is all so much like bigger than it was in my head. I thought this would be like oh my god, is that smaller ground than this? What? Is that Epcot? Oh my god, the Epcot ball at the back there. I've been having some issues with my phone battery lately, where it just keeps like completely draining. And I wouldn't normally mind, but I need it to get on the metro. So we popped into the Apple Store to actually just stick it on one of the chargers. And I just want to show you how ridiculous this building is. Paris just is so like extra in the best way. I respect this so much. Like, what's their Apple Store five stories tall made out of like stone for? And it's got like this courtyard right in the middle of it with like a glass roof. I, it is like, I had a picture in my head of what Paris would look like. And the way that it does just look like that, like obviously everybody also says that it's like dirty and busy and it is those things, but like the actual architecture, architecture, architecture is absolutely stunning. We're in the Champs Elysees at the moment. Um, and we're gonna go and have a look around some of the like fancy shops and definitely in the market for a little coffee. I feel like all I've done on this vlog so far is eat, but you know, like when you have a really early start and you need to like keep replenishing your energy, I, I feel very much like that. I'm flagging, so I need a sweet treat or a little coffee or something. Okay, time to exit the world's most stunning Apple store and get back to business. Oh, sorry. Well, this fits the bill perfectly. We found ourselves in a crepery. It, are we still in the Champs Elysees or are we around the corner now? It said a crepery on the outside, but you're right, it is a bar, yeah. 
But what I find really interesting is that all the seats all, all face out towards the road here. Have you noticed that? Yeah, because I mean, it's a little bit more social, isn't it? Yeah. It, I don't know, it's interesting. It's good for like people watching. But anyway, I've got a chocolate crepe and you've got a Nutella one. And I'm very pleased with my choices. And I've also got a coffee because I need some energy for this boat trip. I'm literally falling asleep at the table. We made it to the Arc de Triomphe. It is very pretty. It kind of reminds me of Marble Arch. <laughs> it does though. Oh my God, look at all those people. What? On the top? Look at all those chickens. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I didn't even know you could go up it. But yeah, right, we're now looking for a metro station because we're going to try and find where we need to get on the boat. We found the Eiffel Tower and the Seine, which is great. We're just looking for the actual boat that we're supposed to be getting on. I think it's up there by those flags. So fingers crossed. Wow. It's so weird that I've never seen this in person before because obviously I've seen so many pictures of it. We made it onto the boat. We've just grabbed a couple of seats inside but there are like outdoor areas that we might go out to once there's like stuff to look at. But I'm really excited. I think this is going to be a really good way to see a lot of like the big sights. And at night as well, which is really nice. And yeah, you love a little boat ride. I do. Um, so yeah, hopefully this will be good. I think we're going to be on here for like an hour. Oh, they put all the seating out there still. We think from when they did like the rowing, or didn't they do, didn't they, didn't they swim in the Seine at one point? Or did that get called off? No, the triathlon. Yeah. Uh, I think the triathlon happened. Oh, I, no. I doubt it's somewhere as there. busy as this. Oh yeah, true. So rowing probably. Yeah, rowing is probably. Wow. Those like column things, it's amazing. There's the Louvre from outside it. Oh my God, there are so many people on that bridge. What are they all doing? It's literally packed full of people. I'm confused. Wow. Like with all the black smoke. Like if you look Where? at the top. I can't really That's see it, but I don't really know what it looked like before. That's the Notre Dame. Like from the hunchback of Notre Dame. What I'm noticing is so many people like sat just by the river. It's actually really nice. Oh my god, look, there's a proposal happening. I wish I could hear them, I'm so nosy. There's also a Channel 4 van like right next to it. So I don't know if that's related or whether that's separate. Look! Oh my god, we've just got off the boat and the Eiffel Tower is sparkling. It's so pretty. Oh wow, the camera literally doesn't do it justice. It's stunning. Another day in Paris. This is our last day. We have just packed everything up and we're about to check out of the hotel before we go and explore. Yesterday we went to Disneyland, it was so fun, but I filmed it separately, so um, make sure you watch that next week when it comes out. We stopped in like a boulangerie, patisserie. Look at all of these. Oh my god. The macarons, all the cakes, we've got pizza, sandwiches, pastries. Wow. Boulangerie hauls. We've got two cans of Orangina. And what else? What did you get? Uh, I got a uh, like a. It's basically got like custard and chocolate. It's that sounds so really good. good. And then I saw these, which are like little hot bread rolls with cheese, ham, and onion in them. So we both got one of these as well. And we're just gonna sit outside, um, and we're just gonna chill here for a minute and have some breakfast. We were just walking past this scooter store, and this says. A Justin Bieber X Vespa collaboration of some kind is on maybe on sale or I don't know but it's that one what so like an orange it's the shop's closed I can't go in what on earth does that have to do with Justin Bieber oh, oh no that's the wrong one. Oh my god look at this tiny loaf of bread it's it's absolutely tiny, that's so cute. I don't know what use I would have for it, but it's very cute. We're just looking at all the snacks in the supermarket. Oh my God, they've got celebrations in Quality Street. I'm gonna get some of these Kinder Country Bars because when I was younger, I used to love Kinder Advent Calendars and they always had these Country Bars in them and I loved them, but I've never seen them in the UK. International. Also, yeah. these, if you're ever in France, and you're like, these are the best like salad sauce you can get. Oh, okay. They're very, very, I mean, I love them. Oh, and show them the other thing that you love. What? Herbemar or whatever Herbemar. it's called. Yeah. 
It's um, basically like a herby salt. Um, I can't speak French, but it's very good. They dry a whole load of herbs, garlic, things like that. And then, then put it all together with the salt. Ooh. I don't know whether, like, how that they do it, but <laughs> it's banging. We're gonna get Kinder Country Bars and these strawberry Haribo things that taste like strawberry milkshake. They're banging. When I asked on my Instagram stories for recommendations of things to do in Paris, loads of people recommended the rooftop at the Galerie Lafayette. Um, because apparently it's free to get up there and they have some stunning views. So we've just done a very long walk down this road called Rue Lafayette to get to the gallery and we're going to give it a go. And here we are, Galerie Lafayette. Oh, it's a shopping centre. I don't know why, I thought it was a museum. Oh my god, look at this building. That is crazy. Let's keep going up. This is the rooftop. And look at that view. Wow. And this, I found out, is an opera house. So I think this is the opera house that the Phantom of the Opera is based on. Oh, see. Yeah, very cool. God, that opera house is massive. It's funny how many musicals, like big musicals, are set in France. I say that, and then the only ones I can think of are Phantom of the Opera and Les Mis, but they're pretty big hitters. We popped to see the Moulin Rouge. It was very booked up, so we couldn't get tickets, but I thought we'd just pop and see it. Look how pretty it is around here. That side, less so, but that side, stunning. It's very, like, bustling around here. We've not been into this bit yet. Oh, there's a Moulin Rouge shop. I think it's a shop because it's a Sunday, probably. Oh no. That means Sunday, doesn't it? I think so. We've decided to buy a little print as a souvenir. So there are loads, but this one is oh, like a lot of places like Monaco. Oh, that's really cute. Yeah, this is a Paris one. Let's see. Oh yeah, because it's got it's got the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, the uh, Moulin, Moulin Rouge. Rouge. The Start of France. Is that, that yeah, where's the Sacre Coeur? That's where we're now going. Uh, it's got like a... Is it that one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's just around the corner from Moulin Rouge. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the Louvre. Yeah, should we get that one? Yeah. That's really cute. Oh my God, I'm a sweaty mess. We just climbed up, like literally hundreds, if not thousands of stairs to get to the Sacre Coeur. There are still more stairs to go, but we've just found out that there is like a tram thing that will bring you up it. So oh, yeah, if you, you want to come and see the Sacre Coeur. Call the funicular. Yeah, Google funicular and do it that way because, oh my God, I'm gonna need to lie down in a minute. Oh, this must be where everyone puts their padlocks. Now that you're not allowed to put them on the bridge. You know how they, everyone put their like padlocks on the bridge and then it got too heavy? Oh, was it? Oh yeah, some of them do look quite old. Oh, cute. This view is pretty amazing, I'll give them that. Wow. Tick. Ticked off another one. And I think the last stop on our sightseeing tour is going to be the Notre Dame. Wow. That is amazing. It, I can't, I really struggle to wrap my head around like old buildings like this and how ornate they are. We never build anything that looks like this anymore. Wow, this area is so pretty. Like, look at the street lamps and everything. It's gorgeous. You smell like damp. <laughs> you smell like damp, it's raining. Um, so we're sort of rushing back, but this is basically like a little separate island where there's not loads here, but there are a lot of plant shops and they're not sure. And another cathedral, actually. So we left our luggage today in like a locked box. Uh, it's cool, let me find it. Show your bags. Thank you so much. Um, and basically we left our bags in there while we then went and explored because it was closer to the airport than our hotel was, so it kind of made sense. Then we got a little bit of extra time, and it only cost like 12 euros, which I thought was really good. Look how bad the allergic reaction on my eyes is getting, and also I have lost two nails. <laughs> This has been the best weekend, but oh my god, I'm so tired now. But basically, it is absolutely pouring with rain, and Charlie has been an absolute gentleman and offered to go and get the bags for us. So, to say thank you, I'm sitting in this little cafe, and I've ordered us 
a croque monsieur to share because we're not really hungry but we both have that at home sometimes when it's like on the menu places and love it so I thought we'd try an actual French one and yeah I don't know if I can recommend stow your bags yeah but they haven't been loaded at the apparently and I mean the drop off process is pretty good let's see let's see what happens when we get them back but I have a feeling Charlie's gonna be absolutely soaked through <laughs> He's back. Well, the bags are all back in one piece, so stow your bag seems all right. Wow. <laughs> I was not expecting it to be that big, but slate. Good chips? We are back from Paris now, and we had such a good time. It was a very, like, flying visit, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm very tired. We did a lot of steps. Like, over the three days that we were there, I think we did about 60,000 steps each, which was mad. It was, like... 20,000 steps a day. What were your favourite bits? Um, French supermarkets. Um, yeah, th there is no better feeling, is there? Cultural experience. Um, yeah, absolutely, like the giant baby bell. You are. I ate it on the metro and he was absolutely mortified to be seen with me. I, when Amy was getting out of the packet, I looked at her I and I was- I didn't eat the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I looked at her and I went, what is wrong with you? And then she just, and then I went, go on, take a <laughs> bite out of it, and she did. It was 200 grams of cheese, guys. It was a lot of cheese. I actually couldn't manage all of it. It was a lot of cheese. Um, but yeah, Paris is awesome. We did quite a lot, to be fair. We did. I feel like we got to see most of it. I don't think there's really anything that I wish we'd seen but didn't. Yeah, I think... I think next time when we go to Paris, or if we were going to get like a boat again, I, I would like to get a private boat next time. Oh, a private boat would do. <laughs> well, just because I, I found like there were wood, it was wooden seats rather than... Yeah, the boat was a little bit strange. And I actually think, like I had a really good time, but when I'm thinking of it critically, I thought it'd be really nice to do it at night time when everything was all lit up. But actually there was, apart from the Eiffel Tower, which looks stunning lit up, I felt like there wasn't much to see lit up. So maybe if you're going to do a boat trip, do it during the day. Yeah, I did love seeing Notre Dame from the river though. I thought that was really cool. It was very cool. And like even seeing the Louvre from both sides, like from the river and from the street was cool as well. Yeah. It's a very pretty building. I can't believe I saw the Louvre. <laughs> it was a really big Louvre. It was a really big Louvre. One thing I don't think we did very, we did very well with seeing all the sites we wanted to see. One thing we didn't do very well with was um, the food. We didn't like plan where we wanted to go for food very well, I don't think. I found, because it was around the Olympics, I found like a lot of stations were shut on the metro. They were. So to, when I've been before, I literally have gone to a metro station and then walked from like a fair, and there were fairly famous metro stations that were shut as well. So yeah, I would go to that really metro station and then I would say, Okay, right, I want to get here, and I would basically, sorry, <laughs> and then I would walk that line. Yeah. And I would walk throughout those areas, because you generally think, if that, like, very much in London, that you have, yeah. like, the Jubilee goes through a lot of, like, touristy areas, whereas, like, True. certain metro lines will go through certain touristy areas, and... I would definitely love to go back there. Um, I think Amy and I are already in discussions about going back to Disneyland Paris at some point. Um, we don't know when. I just life busy. Um, that vlog will be coming late uh, this time next week. The Disneyland Paris vlog as well. Yeah, I'm working hard on getting it done. It's... Yeah, Charlie's editing that one. Yeah. Um, I edited this one. One thing that really surprised me was actually how easy it was to use the Paris Metro. If you are going, I think I, it was so much easier than I thought. I think because I'm used to using the train. I was about to say, if you don't live in London or you don't live in a city with a metro system, Maybe. then that might be a little bit more complicated. Yeah, but I did find, like, on the whole, the signs were really good. And, like, so basically, I can't remember how much of this I said in the vlog, but because it's the Olympics this year, they've developed this app, and I don't know if it will... I think it's finishing. Is it? Mm. Well, basically, they were doing these day passes where you... I think we paid €45 Euros each for three days for unlimited travel on their public transport. So that was literally all of our travel. We got a taxi at one point to do like half the way back from Disney just because it was so late and we couldn't be bothered to do the walk. Yeah. But other than that, we used the metro the whole time, which I'm very proud of myself for actually because I 
always really like freeze when it comes to doing uh, public transport on holidays because I feel like I'm not going to know how yeah. much I'm going to get lost. I mean, we were definitely lapping that up where we could. Yeah, it was good. Um, I thought the metro was a cultural experience as well. <laughs> yeah, and actually one thing that lots of people suggested that we did, which we did do, but kind of by accident, was if you go on Metro Line 6, you you at one point get a really nice view of the Eiffel Tower and I tried to grab my camera out but couldn't in time. But it was really pretty. So if you want a good view of the tower and your the tower. The tower yeah. of Terror. The, yeah, the Tower of Terror. And you're <laughs> going to Paris, go on Metro Line 6, uh, past like the stop that goes near there. I can't remember what it was called. Um but yeah, really cool. I would like to spend more time around where the Notre Dame was. That looked really pretty. Yeah. I think we were so we were quite far out from a lot of stuff. So I think we were near the metro. Though. We were near the metro, but to it's it was quite a distance to yeah. get back. So I mean, what I would suggest is if you can find something in like more central areas, then definitely try and do that. I mean, last time I went with my brother, I stayed right by Gardenor, and that was that was so convenient yeah i think with it being the olympics it was like busier than normal i would say do you think yeah i yeah. think but then at the same time we did go over a, a weekend and yeah it was a busy and it was like co the closing ceremony of the olympics we saw people traveling to the closing one thing ceremony I thought when we were going to the airport one thing i thought was fantastic though is how well signposted certain stadiums were. Oh yeah, they've done the Olympics so well. Um, I thought it was really, really impressive because I know when the Olympics was over here, it was almost, I know technology wasn't that good back then, but really they had so many it's stars. Only like, oh, I suppose, yeah. It was 2012. Yeah, so yeah. like, like if 12 you, years ago, I suppose, 12 years yeah. ago. Um, Charlie's just gone to answer the phone, but yeah. Um, yeah, we had the best time and I feel very lucky. It was very unexpected. Um, hugely grateful to Charlie for surprising me with such a crazy trip. Thank you so much to you guys for coming along. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned next week for the Disneyland Paris vlog. I feel like I've not really done very much traveling this year and every trip I have done has been like, I went to Florida and went to Disney and then we went to Paris and went to Disney so I haven't done like a cultural trip in a while so it was nice to see a lot of the sites even if we did get derailed by Disneyland and also I realized you know earlier in the vlog when I said the two like French musicals I could think of with the Phantom of the Opera and Les Mis and then literally the next clip was the Moulin Rouge um and obviously also the Hunchback of Notre Dame like it's so interesting how many like specifically musicals are set in like Paris in Paris I don't know like when you think about other like European capital cities, that's not really the case. I can't think of a musical that's set in Berlin or that's set in... Can I think of a musical that's set in Milan? Is that their capital city? Or is it Rome? Oh my god, I'm not very good at geography. I don't think I can think of those. But yeah, so it was really, really cool to see like those really famous sites that you hear about in stories and stuff. Obviously, as a big musical theatre fan myself, it was really cool. I would love to go back one day and do a tour of the Paris Opera House. I think it's called, I can't remember the actual name of it, the Palais Garnier, is that right? Um, because apparently, you know, like in Phantom of the Opera, when there's like that sort of river underneath it, that, uh, from what I saw on Google, that is real. So I would love to go back one day and do that and like, see the place that inspired that musical because I love Phantom of the Opera but having never been to Paris before this was the perfect way to like dip my toe in see if I like it like see a lot of the sights and yeah it was amazing and I feel very lucky if you have ever been to Paris let me know your highlights in the comments so the next time I go back I can come back and check these it was so easy traveling to Paris from London um obviously there's a Eurostar as well which I think would have made it even easier but we flew um straight from Heathrow to Paris and it was like an hour long flight it was honestly the easiest flight I think I've ever done I felt like I'd only just sort of got settled in and then they announced that it was um what's the word descending and I was like oh okay huh what were you talking about I was just finishing up and thank you and thank you for the lovely trip no worries I'm just you know it was needed time away um, but yeah, it was it was good. It was cool to explore a new place. Yeah.
and we, I mean, I really, really want to go down to the south of France with Amy. I really... Yeah, you love the south of France. I think, yeah. I think Paris is a good introduction, um, although that Parisian culture and sort of the rest of France are very different. Are they? I mean, I think the basics are the same, of <coughs> obviously being from France and things like that, but I think like the, the culture's a lot slower and it's very much like the UK and London, it's, it's absolutely slow. manic, whereas kind of Norwich, Cornwall, anywhere that's like quite far removed from London is slower. a slower pace of life. Yeah, but yeah, I'd love to go to the south of France, maybe we'll do a little road trip. Oh, how awful. How awful. Okay, thanks guys, hope you have a good day. See you later. Bye. Bye.